as we continue to worship. Nothing I desire. Come. 
As the ushers are passing amongst you, I'm going to introduce Pastor Jerry Witt from the Hope Alliance Church in Hudson, and uh, he's going to bring what the Lord has laid on his heart 
hopefully the whole Holy Spirit is opening our hearts to hear it. So, carry on. Well, thank you for the privilege of um, sharing this morning. Eric, it's great to have you and Mary here. Great surprise. Uh, I saw you come and I said, all right, a church needs about 25 families with this many children. And, uh, that's, that's, and it was great to have children here in this, in this church. And, uh, and I think it's great that you guys are coming. Uh, I know they're excited about it and we're very happy for them. I am Jerry Witt, and uh, I actually am somewhat familiar with this area because I was in Wadsworth for six years as pastor of outreach and evangelism, and then we went to Stowe Alliance for eight years uh, as associate pastor there, and they asked us to plan a daughter church, and so some 1992, Pat and I and uh, 40 people from Stowe Alliance planted Hope Community Church. Um, we started in a racquetball club, and uh, God uh, used it uh, in a wonderful, wonderful way that we were able, finally able to build our own building, and uh, the church has continued to prosper. I, uh, at 75, decided that, uh, in fact, we decided before 75, uh, we brought back our former first uh, church youth pastor for the first 10 years, and uh, we co-senior pastored a couple of years with the intent that we would transition and he'd become the lead pastor. That's what they call him now. And uh, he became the lead pastor and I, I became the associate pastor for several years. And uh, that transition was completed. And uh, at 75, I decided I needed to give a little time after 53 years of ministry my uh, precious wife is here with me, and she has uh, walked, uh, has been walking, has walked through a cancer uh, situation, and so uh, I felt felt that I needed to have a little more time at home. One of the one of the issues with me is that even in high school, I had a basketball coach, and he taught us that if you left 100% on the court, it didn't matter what the what the score was at the end of the game you had done your very best and you knew that you had left everything on the court. Interesting, that carried with me through my whole life. I don't know how to do anything without doing it 110% of the time. And so it's probably either, either retire or uh, not retire. And uh, so for the last couple of years, uh, Pat and I have enjoyed the opportunity to speak uh, at uh, different times, and I really treasure that, and I treasure my time with her. And I'll share a little later some, some of the things that we uh, have been doing in the process, and I want to encourage you, but there might be some things I want you to know as I came, it's the first time I've been in your church, and, and as we drove here, you know, being a church planter, I mean, I just have all these ideas popping in my head of ways that uh, this church could see a, a way to grow. And I thank you for being a friendly church. That's very, very important. Um, and uh, it's important that you always be praying for new people to come every week and that you will be someone who will meet them. I'll tell you a good thing to do. Uh, find that new family and invite them or new couple or new person uh, to go to lunch with you, uh, get to know them. People want to come back. They want to be somewhere where they feel like they're part of a family. They feel like people care. They know they were there. It's very, very important. And I want to talk to you today about, about this whole area of, of gathering and, and 
and calming the life's storms. Do any of you have any life storms? You know, have you ever been through those? We've been through those. Have you ever noticed that storms have a way of catching you by surprise? You know, it, it can happen so fast, bang. How many of you remember the wonder years on television? Do you, do you remember the wonder years? Yeah, okay. Well, I know I, I date myself, I'm sorry. But anyhow, the wonder years, I'm in the, I'm in the wonder years. Maybe you're in the wonder years. I, I, you know, I wonder where I left my phone. Have you ever had that problem? <laughs> or, or where did I park my car if you're in a mall somewhere? Or where are my glasses? Now, I use those Marks glasses. Uh, actually, I go to the dollar store. Marks are too expensive. I want them for a dollar. All I need is a little magnification. And, but, and now and then I'll be looking for my glasses. And I can't find my glasses. And, and I have a hat on and I put them on my hat. And Pat says, well, they're on your, ha your head. They're on your hat. So where are my glasses? Did you ever, what day is it? Especially since I retired. I can't, what day is it? And, um, or where did my one, where did my money go, huh? Where did it went? And, and I often wonder why I wonder so much. Well, I want to talk to you a little about calming life storms because I've been in them and you probably have been in them. And if you've never had one of those, I, I have some exciting news for you. I can guarantee you will have a storm coming sooner or later. You really will. But most of us have already had some kind of a storm. Let's pray for a moment. Father, I want to thank you that it's so true that you calm the storms of life. I want to thank you for the privilege of knowing that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That you change not, and that in the midst of every storm, you are there. The psalmist says that when you walk through the rivers, the waters, that you are there. When you travel through the fire, you are there. And Lord, I just really thank you that you're so worthy to be followed. Father, I pray today that we would see Jesus in the midst of all of this and realize that he is our Savior, he's our Lord, he's our King. Help us to just spend these moments centering in on trusting you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to walk my way if I can. In fact, I've, had, I've been asked this question over 50 plus years of ministry many times. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Maybe you've said something like that. And as we read the, from the scriptures today, we can learn some powerful lessons. And I'm going to walk my way down through that from the scriptures that lets us have a, an, a little understanding as we say something like that. And in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 36, he talks about this on that same day when evening had come, he said this, he said this to the disciples, let us cross over to the other side. And he's talking about the Sea of Galilee, and let's cross to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Now I don't know about you, but I'm still reading the scriptures through over and over and over. And when I read the scriptures, I want to share something with you. I can guarantee you, you could never exhaust the word of God. And there's always something new. I am utterly amazed. I've read the Bible through from cover to cover multiple times. And as I'm doing this, I come across something 
And I, wait a minute. I never saw that before. How did I miss that when I was reading it before? It's always something new. God is so deep and his word is so powerful. I want to thank the, the worship team people that led us in song this morning. You did a great job. It was, it was super. Those words were really words that brought us into focusing on why we're here. And I want to thank you for that. It's, it's not an easy thing. And you know what? They practice and they spend time in preparation. And I want to thank them for that. So there are four miracles that we find in chapter 4 and chapter 5 that happened within probably a 24-hour period, two days at the most, uh, one day and then the next day. And it's an amazing thing as you look at that. In verses 35 through 34, there, there's, there's these four miracles. And the first one is a miracle of the power of the, over the elements of nature and the wind and the sea. Yeah, so true, so true. And then the next one is in Mark 5, 1 through 17. It's, it's the second miracle, and it demonstrates power over the demons and the demonic forces. And if you see, you, those are the fill-ins that you can use in your outline. And then in Mark 25 through 34, in the midst of him heading for the fourth miracle, he's interrupted. And he's interrupted by the woman who's had this flow of blood for 12 years. And, and, and she'd been to all kinds of physicians and, 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 had, and experienced all kinds of horrible pain and nothing had ever worked, but she knew. She just thought, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And you notice in the, ver- in the fourth one, he's on his way to Jairus' home. Jairus said, my daughter's dying. My young daughter's dying. Can you come? And they're on their way. And she touches the hem of his garment. And she's healed. And then that fourth miracle is in the Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. And that's where he's starting to go there. And then in verses 35 through 43, he raises... Jairus' daughter. So you have the first one, the power over the elements of nature, wind, and sea. The second one, power over the demons and demonic forces. uh, And the third one, power over disease. And the fourth one, power over death. These miracles demonstrate that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has power and authority over nature and demons, disease and death. So all day Jesus had been teaching in this large crowd. And and it's interesting, that word was. They took Jesus. And, and it always it always that word always struck me. And I hope that you're reading the scriptures in different translations. It helps you to understand certain things. The translation that I'm reading the Bible through this year is the Amplified Bible. And I am having a ball in that. It is so much fun because it's, it shares, the Amplified Bible shares little things. And that's where I found this, this, this statement. And, and, and they took Jesus as he was and what it means by that and, and I always scratch my head, but you guys would have known it immediately. It's, I'm just a slow learner out of the deal. And what it means is he was already in the boat teaching, and they just took him as he was in the boat. They got in the boat with him. And, and now, okay, that makes sense to me. The Amplified Bible clarified that part. And so it says that he was, they took him in this boat. And I I love this whole thing. In Mark 36, they left the crowd. The disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting, and he took him with them 
other boats. Now, here's something else. I missed this before. Other boats were with him too. I had never thought about that whole process. Wait a minute. What we're going to see about this miracle of the, the wind and the waves, undoubtedly, that, that, that didn't just happen in Jesus' boat. There were other boats along, and others got to see this miracle also. In verse 37, a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat in the boat, so, and it was already filling with water. Now, I want you to know, when you think about the, the guys that were in that boat, Peter, Andrew, James, and his brother John, those four were professional fishermen. They did this all the time for a living. <laughs> they, they, have seen, they have been doing this for years. They've seen all these storms. And it says they were terrified. This thing was so big. It, those lay, it, was, it was more like a hurricane. Those waves were coming. And, and, and over in Israel, you'll find that at, around the Sea of Galilee, there's these, these hills and little mountains like, and, and then there's these valleys. And in these valleys, the wind would come through these valleys and drive that like a force. And it says they had this terror. They're bailing water. I mean, these, are, these guys are scared. Now, these are professional fishermen. They've seen it all. But they've never seen anything like this. They're bailing water for all they're worth. I can just see Peter. He's shouting, you know. He's already telling people what to do. And he's, he's shouting and carrying on. Bail, you guys, faster. we got to get rid of this water. We're sinking. It's, this thing's beyond me. I'll tell you what. I only get seasick when they stop the boat. So I can't go fishing. Uh, that's what I get seasick. As long as you keep that boat going. We got, we got taken on a cruise once. Um, I, had, I was asked to officiate a wedding. And, and you had to, of course, do it um, right away in American waters. You still had to be in American waters. So we got on the boat at 3 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, I had to do the wedding uh, before we got out of American waters. I stepped. Now, this is a cruise ship. This is a cruise ship. I mean, this thing is huge. I stepped on that boat. It's, it's docked. I stepped on the boat, and I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was already in I, it's not going anywhere. It's just sitting there. And I knew I was on the boat. By 4 o'clock, I already had my Dramamine on in order to be able to, to do that. And, of course, we had to go on the cruise. It took me almost three months to get my eyes back to normal after having worn that patch all the time. That, that's a, you know what that really was? I'll give you that for free. I won't even charge you. Anyhow, they're bailing water for all they're worth. And it says that Jesus was in the stern, sleep on, uh, it says leather, uh, a leather pillow-like. Now, wait a minute, this is a boat. Yeah, but it's a fishing boat. They were used to, see, they'd go out and they'd fish all night. And so they'd cast out the nets. Well, then there's nothing to do. And they could go back and, and they laid in the stern and there was a pillow there and take a nap if you wanted to take a nap, whatever you wanted to do. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping, sleeping. And so, of course, they wake him up and say to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? You know, in, in this whole thing, we see Jesus in his humanity. Hopefully this thing will stay on here with me. Let's see what's going on. Okay. It says, and we see Jesus in his humanity, tired and exhausted. You know, here's Christ. 
And, and this is something that you probably understand, but I never fully understand. But I believe it because the scriptures teach it. He's fully man and who? Fully God. Fully man and fully God. And so we see him in this. And this profound impact, miracle would have really profound impact on the disciples. So here he is sleeping. He was accused by the, the sleeping Savior is accused by the fearful sailors. There's no doubt about it. Look at verse 39. This was no ordinary storm. It was a tremendous storm. And in Mark 4, 39, Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Hush. Stop. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. How many of you are fishermen? Any fishermen in this group? Well, we aren't going to have fish for lunch, Pat, I'll tell you that. Only one fisher. All right, did you catch anything? Oh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. All right. See, normally, if you're out on a boat, normally, if the wind stops, what happens with the waves? They still go on a little bit, don't they? They, they're, they're, and they, and they're getting less and less. Not when Jesus does it. Not when Jesus does it. No. Stops, just like that. Now, I never, I, I, I can't preach a sermon on this. I've never heard a sermon on the other boats. But I would love to. Have any ever heard any of the other boat, a sermon on the other boats? No, because that's the only thing we know is there were other boats. That's all we know. That would be a short sermon. It's one thing that people pray for when they come to church, a short sermon, okay? I brought Pat along. You know why? Because she knows the signals. <laughs> There's another one. She never does that to me. I, I want you to know that I am very, very thankful for my wife. Um, we've been married almost 58 years, and she was 13 when we got married. Um, uh, is anybody here from West Virginia? <laughs> now, I'll tell you, by the way, I have some great friends from West Virginia, some of our best friends. Um, we were 19, though. We were 19. Quite mature. We were very mature at our age at 19. We grew up together <laughs> after we got married. And uh, maybe some of you know about that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I love the way that when Jesus does a miracle, it happens immediately. It happens immediately. I love this. Jesus says to them, Why are you so fearful? Don't you know? that as long as I'm with you, you're always going to be safe. Now tell me why. Why do storms come in our lives? Why did Jesus allow the storm to come when he's in the boat? He isn't going to stop the storms, but you know what he did? He kept the boat from sinking. And whatever you're going through, There might be times that you think you can't get through it. But you will. And you will because Jesus 
is your Savior and your Lord. I've been through some times in my own life, times in which I was so depressed, so discouraged. And this was not an Alliance church, but we were in a church where the chairman of the board wasn't sure there was an afterlife. And of course, the Bible was the writings of men. And every time I preached, I got nailed to the wall after that because I preached as if this was the Word of God and it was true. And I'm sure I wasn't the greatest preacher then. I was pretty young at that time. And I'll tell you how depressed I was. One day in my office, I was so depressed, I said these words. God, do you really exist? Now that's, that's being depressed. God, do you really exist? And about 20 minutes later, I can't explain it, but I know it happened. God flooded that room and flooded my body with this warmth that just consumed every part of me. And it was like his spirit said to my spirit, Yes, I exist. And I'm enough to bring you through anything you ever have to experience. It marked me for life. It marked me for life. It marked me that there are times... I could do a lot of things besides preach. But if there was ever a time that I thought about quitting, I remember that day. And he's enough to bring me through. Some of the greatest hurts of my life I hate to say this, and it would never be true for you, but some of the greatest hurts of my life came from church people. I'm sorry to have to say that. But I'm sure that you're not that kind of people. And I'm sure that Eric's going to have a great ministry here with you. Pat and I will be praying for you in that. I do want you to know that. And he is enough. He's enough to bring us through no matter what. And he is for you too. He is for you too. He's a great God. How great, how great is our God. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's true. I know it's true. I know it's true. Well, hey, you ready to do some writing? Here we go. We got to... What time's lunch, hey? <laughs> Here we go. The storms in life that you and I face, they're financial storms. If you're fully invested in the market... On March 18th, between March 18th and March 23rd, 2020, you went through a financial storm, a big financial storm. Relational storms, 
It's where good people start thinking wrong. They, they just can't think right. And that's when they end up in divorce court or juvenile hall. There are spiritual storms, trials, tragedies, and misfortunes which rock our faith. can't believe the times that someone has said to me, why did God take my loved one? And I just want to share with you, I don't have all the answers, but I know one thing. I know one thing. I don't believe that God takes your loved one. Now, there might be a time, I think there are three reasons for death, but I can tell you who you ought to be uh, mad at, and there are people who are there mad at God. And I say, now, wait a minute. You're mad at God? How about, how about Adam and Eve? How about Adam and Eve? They, they, they made the choice. And there's a, little, there's a little verse in the scriptures that says, with sin came what? Death. With sin came death. Where'd that come from? Adam and Eve. Because God doesn't make robots. He gives us choices. He gives us choices. With sin came death. Adam and Eve. Then the scriptures also tell me some other things. One thing Jesus said this about Satan. What is he? He's a murderer. He's a murderer. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. Now, there's, a, there's something that I, I, I'm still trying. I, I'm, you know what? I'm supposed to know some answers. But I know what the scriptures teach me. Is it, Did you ever ask yourself this question? When God said to Satan, what about my servant Job? Have you considered him? And you remember what Satan said, oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, your servant Job, you blessed him. He's got all this money. He's got this great family. He's got all the, you know, take his money away. Take his health away. Take his family away and see if he doesn't curse you. What did God say to him? Well, he said a few things, okay? But I want to tell you one thing. He said, but you can do all of that. Go ahead. But you can't take his life. That says to me, Satan has the power to take your life. Unless God tells him he can't. Very, very interesting. He's a murderer. He's a murderer. Spiritual storms, occupational storms, problems at work or loss of a job, your fourth fill in blank. The fifth one, physical storms, health and wellness. The sixth one, emotional storms, depression, suicide. There are five things we learn from the Gospel of Mark. First, God's word assures us of a safe landing. I love that. Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. Safe landing. God's word assures you and I, do you know what? We have a safe landing. I'm going to die. I'm not afraid of death. I would say to you that I'm a little afraid of what I might have to go through to get there. Hopefully I can just have a good old heart attack sometime, boom, 
and be gone just like that. But you might have to walk through cancer. We might have to walk through dementia. I don't know. I know I visited all these dear, dear folks who are walking through some really, really difficult times. But I do know this. I have a safe landing. I have a great future. Billy Graham said what? You will read in the newspaper that Billy Graham is dead. Don't you believe it for one moment, he said. I'll be more alive then than I've ever been. We have a safe landing. There's no doubt about it. Second, God's word alerts us of some stormy seas. Yeah. Believers are not protected from the storms of life. TV evangelists and TV programs can make you think that once you're a Christian, you have no problems if you live by faith, if you have enough faith. Well, I want to tell you something. It's not true. Not only is it true, but when trouble and storms come, and if you believe that, and many people do, it undermines their faith. It undermines their faith. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. It's not strange. You can be walking with Jesus. You can have your daily devotions. You can have good prayer times. You can be giving your tithes and your offerings. You can serve the Lord. You can be caring for the needy. You can help preach the gospel. And bam! Bam! A storm comes. And it's okay. It's life. Remember the disciples were in the boat not because they were disobedient. Think about that. Who told them to take him across to the other side? Jesus. They weren't being disobedient. They were being obedient. And they get out there and they're in a hurricane. Where'd that come from? Stormy seas are a part of our journey until we have a safe landing in heaven with Jesus. Third, God's word announces that the Savior's on board. The Savior's on board. Hey, say that with me. He's on board. Yeah. Yeah. Good, I want you to do a little work here too, okay? The Savior's on board. He's on board in your life. He cares about you. And as we walk through the storms, He's there. God's Word announces that the Savior's on board. Fourth, God's Word announces or assures us Yeah, God's word assures us that our ship is in good hands. Our ship's in good hands. I love that old hymn. You're going to know this one. Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's what? (laughs) It's a hard word. I had to practice saying this word. Tempetuous sea. Too bad the songwriter couldn't come up with a little simpler word on that one, okay? God's word assures us that our ship is in good hands. Psalm 89.9 says, You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. He calms the storms so that the waves are still. If Jesus was just a good man, a great teacher, a miraculous leader, then he never could have done all of these miracles. He was God. 
He was the Son of God. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And somehow they're one God. And if you try to figure that out, you're in trouble. No one can really figure it out. But the Bible teaches it. I believe it. That settles it. It's true. Safety is not the absence of trouble, but rather safety is the presence of Jesus. Never forget it. There's a thread that runs through all of these miracles for us to see. He's not just a good man. He is God. What did Jesus say? You've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are what? One. One. Fifth, God's word gives us a glimpse of the master plan. God's word gives us a glimpse of the master plan. Why would Jesus put them in the midst of this treacherous situation. Today we would call it in harm's way. Why is it that storms are allowed in our lives? Psalm 119 says this in verse 67. Before before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. In verse 71 it says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The storms of life help us cling to Jesus closer and closer. I've been told over and over and over. It was in the midst of my storm that I drew closer and closer to Jesus. I felt his presence. I know he was there. He's there for you. And you know what? You might not feel it. But he's there. That is the truth. That is the truth. I'd like to ask you to take a moment and think about what's in the bottom of your outline. There are two questions think about it. It says, are you operating in faith or in fear? Are you operating in faith or in fear? Hey, Jerry Witt. The Holy Spirit has to slap me up alongside the head every once in a while. Hey, Jerry, you got stinking thinking today. Are you operating in faith or in fear? And who are you keeping your focus on? Who are you keeping your focus on? Would you bow with me in prayer? And I want you to take some moments to think about those two questions. You talk to God. Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? I assume that might be true for everyone here, but can you point to a time? Do you know for certain that today you're trusting Jesus? You've invited him to be in your life. You want him to be your savior. You're sorry for your sins. I'm so sorry that my sin put Jesus on the cross. But I'm so thankful that he was willing to do that. For everyone who believes, for everyone who receives Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord, he gives to them the gift 
of eternal life. Maybe you're watching today on Facebook. You happen to be just sweeping through the internet and you came across this and, and somehow you heard about calming life storms and you had one and you listened. If you've never prayed and invited Christ to come into your life, He is the one you want in the midst of the storm. He is the one that is worthy to be followed. He is the one and the only one who can give you eternal life. Will you trust him today? Father, I don't know. I don't know what every person in this room is going through, but you do. You know every detail. You know every thought. You know every motive. You know everything. Touch our lives today. May we be people that cry out to you. And may we truly believe and want Jesus to be king of my life. I crown you now. Father, I pray for this church. I pray for Eric and Mary as they come, but a church can have a good pastor, but a church only grows if they have wonderful, wonderful people who love you, who trust you, who obey you, who follow you, who live by your word and by its principles, and who reach out to people. Touch this church. Father, I pray that you will bless this church. Touch its people by the power of God by the word of God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. Pat and I consider it a great privilege to do that. And uh, I just trust that um, God has spoken to your heart about ways in which, are, who are you focusing on? and that you're focusing on him. God bless you. Would you stand with us as we sing this final song? Let's go.